If you've ever clicked File, New, and SOLIDWORKS, then you're somewhat familiar with templates. There's three main file types in SOLIDWORKS, and each has a corresponding template. Part templates, assembly templates, and drawing templates. In this video, we'll be focusing on part and assembly templates. The example we'll be working through is a part template, but the process is almost identical for assemblies. For drawing templates, There'll be a link in the video description below for more detailed resources. Part and assembly templates control a variety of things, such as all document properties on the file. This includes things like units and number of decimal places, the drafting standard that's being used, and the image quality of the document, as well as any custom properties that you want to have pre-populated onto the part or assembly files. Display settings, such as the visibility of different planes and reference geometry the actual scene that's placed on the part or assembly file, and also any reference geometry that might be created, like planes or axes. Let's take a look at how to get started. Depending on your options, when you click to create a new file, you may see two different display types. Right now, what I'm seeing is called the advanced display, and there's also a novice option down here, which limits you only to the default templates that are included in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to click Advanced, and to create a new template, I want to choose one of my existing default templates to start with, so I'm going to select the template for a part file and click OK. SOLIDWORKS opens a new blank part file based on this template. Any adjustments I make will be saved back to the new template file I'm going to be creating. If I click the Options wheel, and go to the Document Properties tab. Anything I change here is going to be saved in the template. So I'm going to leave my overall drafting standard at ANSI. If you wanted to make adjustments to any of the annotations or dimension standards, this is where you could do it. Down on the Units tab, we can set our desired units. So I'm going to switch to IPS and number of decimal places. I'll use three decimal places here. Another common change to make in the template would be the image quality, which affects the level of resolution the model is displayed with. It's typically best to keep this somewhere in the middle, but if you notice a lot of jagged edges, you may want to increase the image quality slightly, and if you notice large file sizes, you may want to decrease it. It's worth exploring these document properties, because anytime you find yourself repetitively changing them, that probably indicates a change that you should be making to your template. Once we're happy with the document properties, I'll click OK. Other common changes you might want to make may be changing the scene in SOLIDWORKS. This is controlled from the pull-down menu in the heads-up display. Right now we're using the three-point faded scene, but I might want to switch to the plain white, or maybe something with a gradient. This is up to you, but realize that whatever scene is selected here is going to be the default in all new files created with this template. I'll use plain white here. The model display will also be affected in the template, so I'm going to leave it at the default, shaded with edges, as well as the visibility of any planes. So if I click on a plane to show it, that plane would be shown by default in my template. I don't want to do that here, but I do want to create my own additional reference geometry. I may want to have axes in my template if I'm doing a lot of work with revolves or circular patterns. So I'll go to Reference Geometry and Axis. Any reference geometry I create will be present in new parts that are created from this template. I'm going to choose the option to create a axis from two planes and select both my front and right plane from the flyout tree to produce a vertical axis there. The last most common change to make to the templates revolves around custom properties, or what we call metadata. This is accessible from the File Properties button next to the Options. Anything I want users to fill out should be created here first. So we have categories such as Part Number and Description that we can load in, although we would want to leave the actual value as blank, because again, this is going to represent things that I want the user to fill out as they're working on their parts. Custom properties are valuable because they can be carried over to the drawing automatically, and they can also show up in your PDM data cards for searchability. And of course, 
They can be used in your build materials. When we're done making changes to our template, we'll do a file save as. And this is really where the key step comes into play. Rather than saving as a part file, we'll choose from the pull-down menu to save it as a part template in this case. If you were working on an assembly, this would be an assembly template. When you select that file type, SolidWorks should automatically point you to your existing templates directory, which in my case is C, Program Data, SolidWorks, SolidWorks 2019, and Templates. Now I can simply give this file a new name. I'll call it Custom Part, and click Save. That's it. Once the template is saved, I should be able to close it. And the next time I click the New File command, I'll have the option to access my custom part template right here, which will create me a new part file with my axis and any of my other settings that I adjusted. You may want to share your templates on a network drive or point to a different directory than the default location. And in that case, you would want to access the file locations through your system options. Click the Options wheel, go on down to File Locations, and choose Document Templates. This would allow me to add additional directories, such as in this case, I have some training files templates. Once I specify the folder that those templates are stored in, and click OK, these will show up as an additional tab when I click File New. I have a new set of templates to choose from now. So templates can be stored on a network drive or on your vault, or just in multiple directories on your local PC. To summarize, once again, we looked at creating our own part template, which is the same process very nearly as creating an assembly template. Looking at how we can modify any of the document properties, most common ones being units and precision, drafting standard, and image quality. Add your own additional custom properties to the template, Modify any display settings you may want, adjust the scene and lighting of the environment, and add your own additional reference geometry, as well as how to add new file locations for additional templates if necessary. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and let us know if you have any additional comments or questions.